Right, class, are you sitting comfortably behaving? Tyler at the back there, behave yourself. Right, we're going to do a quick little bit on the whiteboard about Range Rover Evoke locking mechanism -y system. So when you go to your car, which modules are involved in the unlocking and authorization and starting of your car? So a lot of this evolves around the KVM module. Now, if you're having problems with your car, your key seems to have lost the code, this may help you. Right, so basically you have your key fob. Can I draw a key fob? Something like that, it's got that shady bit and it's got, that's all right, we'll accept that. Right, and then you press the button on that. You might have keyless entry, in which case it will detect your presence of your key fob as you get close to your car. And there are some issues around that with car theft at the moment, so I won't go too much into that. But then you sit in the car with your key fob in your pocket, by the side, wherever you want to put it. And then you press the start button. Now, when you go to press the start button, it needs to know, the car needs to know, right, have I got a key that's authorised, that's in my address book, if you like, an authorised key in the car before I can start? So how does that do it? So this goes to a little module that's in the headlining, and we'll have a look where it is. And we'll have a look what it looks like. It's a little tiny little box like that with a little connector on it. Choo, choo, choo. And that is what they call that, Tyler. That's the radio receiver. radio receiver module. So that sends out its radio waves and that. Now, But this radio receiver doesn't actually have the address book in it. That is just doing the radio receiving bit of it. And then that is hardwired in the car, a little wiring loom, choo, 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 to the KVM module. And the KVM module has a chip in it, and we'll have a look at that, uh, an IC, I think they call it a quad flat pack, right? And that IC there is your address book. And that address book has a list of keys. So if you want to add a new key to your car, you need to present the key, you need to do some programming, and it needs to basically add it to this address book. Now, a lot of this will be the same for the L404 or the L405 and the L494, the Range Rover Sport and the big Range Rover. The, the key fob looks the same, this module's the same, and this is much the same as well. Now, where are problems occur and what else is happening here? So, this radio receiver module, these seem pretty reliable, um, but the KVM module does seem to be have some sensitivity to it. We have heard stories of people plugging diagnostics equipment in and the KVM blowing. But the good news is the KVM modules tend not to completely fry themselves. They seem to have some component, and it may be a fuse, it may be a resistor, a capacitor, that, that blows. There's a tiny component that blows that enables, enables that makes this non-functional. So we will go through. So now if you suspect it, the easiest one to change is this. But be careful. The, all these, these two components here work at either 433 megahertz, megahertz, or, all right, that's 433, to transmit. They need to be on the same frequency, and that is the UK and most of the world, but the US regulations dictate they have to run at 315 megahertz. So these components here, you need to make sure you buy a US key and a US receiver if you're in the US or you need the 433, so make sure you, you swap like with like if you're getting these components. This one here doesn't matter. This has got no frequency receiving in it. Right, let's have a look at them, Tyler. So, you know what the key fob looks like. This is what we're talking about. And we will also go on and show you in the car how to bypass all these, and we'll show you where these components are on the car. But let's just look at them. So that's the key fob. And that sends its signal wirelessly to this. And they come in these little lush boxes that you can open up. Push, push. Genius design. And there you go. You can see around the outside the antenna. And this is receiving the signal from this key to say, yes, I recognize you. You're on. Well, it, 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 the recognized bit is done in this. But that actually receives the key and goes, right, I'm, I'm hearing you. I can hear you. I see what you are. I will report back. So the KVM, this module here. So this is one we've sent for repair, okay? And you will see it. Again, they come with these cool little, and that is the KVM module. 
okay that is it there and this IC here is the IC which forms the address book so this is the KVM module right let's jump over to the car now I will show you where these are on the car and I will show you how you can start the car without even having either of these two to prove the near field sensing module on the key and to show that that uses a completely separate circuit a security check and doesn't need these two on right let's jump in the car mm. right one thing i will say before we go to the car before we start looking or showing you where anything is 99 percent of problems with your key fob not working will be the battery in your key fob so make sure you've tried both key fobs if you've got a spare one just to check it's not the problem with the, that make sure you've replaced the batteries in your key fob and we've done a video how to do that so before you start getting into any of this other stuff and the other thing is before you start disconnecting modules make sure you disconnect your battery because otherwise just unplugging them and plugging them and messing around may cause them to blow so when you're replacing them or removing them make sure you disconnect your battery right let's go and have a look in the car right so on a Range Rover Evoque the KVM module is plugged into these two wires here okay and you can see those two plugs here we're not going to plug it in because we're going to show you but that is hidden by this big metal plate that goes across here there and then this module here now we work this is the handbrake control module just for those that want to know that sits there so you have to take this off undo the bolts take that off to get to it oh i've got it stuck now right then there you go and it will expose it there did we work out what that plug was for tyler well, it's not the toe it's not the toe we've got that's okay but it's we've got an extra random plug there with some nice chunk of some girt wires in there if anyone knows what that's for let us know I wonder if it's for an extra module of some description, radio or that SARS module or something they had for the um, US market. Don't know. Right. So there we go. So that lives in there. Right. Put that one away. So it's not in the car. I feel like Paul Daniels. Right. Let's jump in the front, Tyler. Right. So here we are. You join us in the front of the car. So this is the overhead module. Now, Next to the overhead module here, there is a one of these. Now this has got like some funky little Velcro. It's super industrial Velcro. Have you seen that, Tyler? Yeah. It's not even, it doesn't budge. It's, anyway, so, and that's got some sticky foamy pad up in there somewhere. It's about there, is it, Tom? And then that plugs into that wire there. So that is your radio receiver module. Now, these interest, now I guess it's here because it can see whether the key is in the front here quite easily. But in the L494, it's actually in the boot, wasn't it? Yeah. But there we go. So, Still quite close though. So right, so let's have a look. Let's grab the key, Tyler. We've not got this. Let me go and put that on the table. I'll grab the key and we'll see if we can start this. We'll swap seats. Right, so you're in our poor Evoke that's been ripped apart. Um, so if you look down here under the steering column, we've got the light on it. Tyler's going to... There's this little section with these little ribs in here. Okay, and that's so that it's... Um, so that you can feel it, I guess, in the dark, or it just gives you a, a location. Now, if you put the key next to that, there's a sensor the other side of that that works on a different technology to the radio frequency and i believe it's got no radio frequency transmission it's near field sensing technology and he should be able to put that there and it's gonna be a bit funny. can it be yeah he's got a smart key not found you've got to get the you've got to hit the spot correctly haven't you i don't know if it's just ours but the ribs almost don't line up you, you know, there's a special spot you've got to get it in oh well, there you go right okay. so there you go actually I, in the end i held it sideways so it <laughs> might you, just you've got to put it in between the ribs maybe yeah maybe. so there we go so you can see with no kvm we're all good to go so right how has this video helped you in your life good question so if you cannot start your car but right, ah we need to go back so those kvm modules are liable they they did they do have some susceptibility and we've heard of stories of people just plugging in diagnostics equipment and the KVM blowing. They are susceptible to blow from time to time. So let's go and have a look what you can do. Right, so 
These can be repaired for relatively low cost. Um, we've used these guys here who are KWATronics. And there's their details there. You've got the phone number. And he repaired it. And I think it was about £60. Don't quote me on that. But it was not prohibitively expensive. It's a lot. Because if you don't repair it. Now, in repairing it, he's just replaced the internal fuse in here. Um, or secret component resistor capacitor or something. So all the data was still stored in this chip. So I didn't need all my keys worked. I don't need to do anything other than send it off to him. I can start the car, drive the car with the old rib section, get this repaired, put it back in and we're all good to go. So that's a much better way than taking it to Land Rover because they will charge you to put a new one in, throw the old one in the bin, which is environmentally dodgy, then they'll have to code you new keys or try and sell you new keys and code those keys. So it will soon cost you up. I've heard of it costing over a thousand pounds just to do this where we fixed it for 60 pounds. Right. And on the, you will remember that when we added the activity key, those of you that watched to the Land Rover Defender, they have to put a new one of these modules in every time because what it does is on this IC here, this integrated circuit here, it's this is my address book. This is your address book. This is which keys are allowed to start this car. But the way these modules work now to reduce car theft and people hacking them is it stores your keys at the factory when you buy the car and then it locks it and it's like, bam, padlocked, closed. You can't get in that. You cannot add a key. All you can do is throw this away and get a new key. But what this clever man at KWATronics does is he actually replaces the whole IC. So this now has, and you can see the heat where he's resoldered it on there. This now has a complete blank memory. This is re-virginified, if you like. So this now can be added. Can we, if we wanted to change a key, we could then use this one next time we want to change the keys on the Defender. But it brings up an interesting topic. Tyler and I were saying, well, look, it's good. We understand that there are flea bags out there that like to steal cars that we've all worked hard to earn the money to buy nice cars. And then these flea bags come along and steal them. And that is horrible. And we hate car theft in all its forms. Um, but in reacting to that, Land Rover have created a system where just to change it, just to add a key, just to add an activity key, this all the technology in this and all the resources that have gone into this, the gold plate, gets thrown in the bin. But if they'd have designed it with this address book where it was removable, then that would have meant that they would only need to sell you a new IC at the dealership. They could have taken this out, take the old address book out, boop, throw it away and plug a new address book in. Would that have been a better option? I think it would have been. Um, or should Land Rover keep all the ones they take out and send off for some sort of refurbishment program that could be sold as refurbished ones? They do do refurbish on other items on the car. I've seen it on the parts catalogue. So that was just a little thought we had on the side while we were doing it, wasn't it, Tyler? One of our workshop conversations. Right, they're fitting the mezzanine, so we better get back and check how they're doing on our new workshop fit out, don't we, Tyler? Yeah. Okay, good luck with that. Right. Tyler's just asked me a question and he looks at me like I know it all, but he knows I really don't. And I couldn't answer his question, so I'm going to ask you guys a question. Let's turn these tables around, shall we, Tyler? Right, so Tyler said, that's all. I get that whole address book, Simon. I get that's your address book. I get that stores your keys. I get everything. But he's going, Simon, we haven't got this in the car. The car currently has no address book. So where is the bit that says this key... This key, we'll call him Charlie, why not? Um, what, what, what says Charlie's on the list? Because when we put it next to the near field sensor, there must be stored somewhere in the car the near field sensor ID. Obviously, any key's not gonna open the car. Um, so there must be another module somewhere that stores. So when you program a new key to the car, it must store the RF data address book in there but you're quite right, Tyler. It must also program the near field sensing ID into some other module on the car because it, it can't be in the KVM because you've seen we started it without a KVM. Interesting.